Hello, my name is Ekaterina Nakos, and I am going to be presenting on Karen Horney. Um, here's a little background about Karen Horney. Karen Horney was born in Hamburg, Germany in 1885. She was the second born child to her parents. In her early childhood, she struggled to win the approval and unconditional love that her parents gave to her brother. Her life at home was quite difficult. Karen ultimately gave up trying to prove herself to her parents to feel loved and decided that the opposite approach will get their attention. She turned to rebellious behavior and officially decided that she would get their attention that she desperately needed by focusing on her studies to be the smartest. Her love life was not the best either. She was looking for love and holding on. Never mind, a dog will suffice. For love, Karen had to look elsewhere. She did not feel like she was getting adequate love and attention from her parents, as a result, she grew anxious and hostile. Her struggle with love lasted her entire lifetime. Karen grew attached to the men in her life, looking for a sense of love and security. In the absence of men in her life, or when a relationship was coming to an end, Hornei often found herself feeling less than and contemplating suicide. We're moving on to basic anxiety. It's the foundation, according to Horney, it's the foundation for the development of all future neuroses. Social forces in childhood influence personality development. According to Karen Horney, as children, we protect against basic anxiety in four ways. By securing affection, children learn that if someone loves them, then they are safe and will not be hurt by them. By being submissive, Children avoid antagonizing others with a logic that submission will prevent conflict, providing safety. By attaining power, a child can compensate for feelings of helplessness by becoming independent from others. Um, by becoming independent from others. To protect against being hurt by others. For example, Horney could not decide what to do in her relationship. She told a friend that she was either ready to marry the man or just get a dog. Spoiler, she got a dog. Horney detached herself from other people emotionally because she did not want to rely on anybody to satisfy her emotional needs or give them the power to hurt her. Horney versus Freud. Karen Horney did not agree on some of Sigmund Freud's theories. Horney was very vocal about why she disagreed with Freud's theories on female psychology. Male bias in female psychology due to sociocultural environment. Um, produced by his male bias that was backed by the sociocultural climate, arguing that women are not biologically inferior to men and do not have penis envy. Karen Horney was expelled from the New York Psychoanalytic Institute due to her refusal to adhere to Freudian theory, shifting her efforts to the founding of the to her founding the American Journal of Psychoanalysis that is still publishing today. How personality is formed. Personality development is influenced by social forces, not biological ones. Karen Horney emphasized that there are other factors that set a foundation for the way that we deal with conflict. She disagreed with Freud's Oedipus complex, arguing that the evidence is weak and the notion is outdated. Neurotic trends, moving against people, moving away from people, moving toward people. Horney proposed three neurotic trends that are self-protective mechanisms compelling the behavior of neurotic individuals. Movement toward other people is the compliant personality that causes an intense need for approval and affection from others. Movement against other people is the aggressive personality behavior which ultimately views others as competition, causing hostility, and no regard for others. Movement away from others is the detached personality behavior used to create emotional distance and reliance only on the self. The idealized self-image. The idealized self-image is another major contribution of Karen Horney. The idealized self is a self-constructed image of an individual that is close, a close representation of themselves. She explained that neurotics build an unrealistic version of themselves to unify their personality the idealized self-image. However, the individual falls victim to the 
tyranny of the shoulds, where the neurotic individual tells themselves that they should be the best or most desirable because they are not pleased with their real self-image, ultimately leading to self-hatred as the image they created for themselves is far from their reality.